My teacher is here, so I'm going to give him the microphone to talk. Just a minute, let me introduce him. Um, Professor Leo Twaiti is the Dean, Faculty of Arts, University of Benin. He flew in from Benin today for the purpose of attending this eighth colonial. He is himself a professional historian. We have known for years. When I was in secondary school, he taught me history. And uh, he's happy that he's so strong that he taught history. He's now a professor of history. <laughs> Yes, my father and uh, is a historian, so I'll give our daddy time to respond. Uh, thank, you so much. Um, thank you very much, Professor Sadelo, uh, for that very good talk and good compliments. As a matter of fact, I came in this morning by the 10 o'clock flight for the purpose of attending this colloquium. And I'm returning by tomorrow morning. I'm very, very pleased to be here. In all honesty, I would have lost a lot if I had not come here. My interaction with Professor Sadolo has been for a very long time, right from ages, as it were. And I'm very impressed that he has been able to give this lecture today. Benson is not my only output as a professor. I have about five or six other persons who have gone through me who are now professors in various universities here and outside the country. As a matter of fact, I was touched by the last speaker when he talked about history being removed from our syllabus. It is a tragedy to put in. It's a tragedy and a complete misfortune for this country. Now, when I gave my inaugural lecture some time ago, I think it was two years ago, when I gave my inaugural lecture, I devoted a paragraph of that lecture to the absence of history in our schools. Because the question is this, if you do not want to know your past, it means that you have foreclosed yourself to the past, and then of course, you have foreclosed yourself to the future. You must understand your past in order to understand your future. There is no logic more than that. It does not answer to any other logic. If you, dis if you, if you destroy your past, then it is obvious that you are destroying your future. Like Benson has said, in most universities, take the United States for example, where I have also been to, not as a student, but as a participant in their lecture, in their lecturing, it is compulsory that whatever you read, you must read, you must know and pass the history of the United States. Many of us have been given fellowships to go to the United States for one fellowship or the other. Once you are given a fellowship and you are invited for a fellowship in the United States, the, the process of your preparation involves sending you materials on the history of the United States. In fact, as soon as you land, the period of orientation involves introducing you to the greatness, to the valor of the United States. 
They want you to know about the nation. But the case is different from us. The policy of whether we should not read history again in our university was indeed a policy that was emplaced by illiterates. Yeah, of course. Were illiterates. I can still I can still visualize very clearly looking at the television and watching a military administrator defending the idea that history should not be taught in secondary schools. I remember that very clearly. But the issue is this. Have we actually the is it that we are crying over spilled milk? No. It is true that you don't cry over spilled milk. But in this case, we are trying to gather that milk and put it back into the cup. And I want to let you know that these statements you have made here have been made in the forum of the Historical Society of Nigeria. The Historical Society of Nigeria, to which I'm a fellow, has taken it as its cardinal objective to see that history is restored in our schools. In one of those instances, that was when Olusegun Obasanjo was president. In one of those instances, when the Historical Society visited Obasanjo and mentioned it, it sounded strange to him. Because you know very well that beyond the military or technical education, Olusegun Obasanjo is a traditional man. He is one who rests on traditional knowledge. Whether you want to accept it or not, he has native intelligence. Yes. And that native intelligence can only be acquired from a sense of history. Yes. And he was baffled. He was, he was tattooed. Then, this other lady, the, the lady who is now, um, who now uh, participates in Bring Back Our Girls. What's her name? Yes, right was the Minister for Education. He immediately summoned her in the presence of members of the Historical Society to ask her, is this true that history is no longer in the syllabus? And instructed her that make sure that history returns to the syllabus. But unfortunately, that was the tail end of his administration. And so, that drive which a passenger tried to give was not, was not carried through. But I want to let you know that the Historical Society of Nigeria has not relented. In fact, what Benson was telling you now is actually the outcome of the efforts of the Historical Society of Nigeria. There was a program, a national program on television some time ago, in which Professor Osadolov featured, and the president of the Historical Society also featured, talking about history in our schools. I want to, I want to uh, believe, because a lot of things have happened since then, that this, this matter has now gone beyond mere talk. It has actually gone to the level where efforts are actually being made now to restore history to the syllabus. And the, the administration, I mean the federal government, has taken positive steps in that direction. If you are talking of a pressure group, I want to assure you that the Historical Society of Nigeria is a sufficient pressure group. But that is not to say that if you have the opportunity wherever you are, you should also lend 
effort to, to the present uh, um, action that's been undertaken by the Historical Society of Nigeria. I want to let you know that um, this colloquium, this colloquium is, is a heart-rendering one. I, I missed the one of last year and, and uh, I'm, in, I'm, I'm intrigued by the fact that you, 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 you've been talking about this and the, the lecture you talked about for last year is also very instructive. And I'm happy that we have somebody of the caliber of Professor Osadova, whom we respect a lot. We don't just respect him because he's an historian. We respect him because he's very articulate. He's very intelligent. Um, if you ask me, five, the top five students or ten students that have gone through me, I will readily tell you that Professor Osadova is one of them. He is very intelligent, and uh, when I came in and I saw he was already gesticulating, I asked myself, I said, I hope these people know that there's going to be dinner, because if you do, if you are not careful, the Saturday will talk through lunch, through dinner, and we'll not be anywhere. So I'm, I'm, I, I, want to, I want to thank you very much, yes, Dr. Sadolo, for yes, that yes, very yes, brilliant, yes, brilliant yes, effort. Yes, and I will thank the organizers of this function that you are quite on track. I'm pleased to be with you, and uh, I wish you God's blessings. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh,